When asked if they would, a vast majority of people say they would pull the lever sacrificing one life to save three in the trolley problem. Instead, when asked how morally acceptable would it be for a person to push another guy on the train tracks from a footbridge, knowing that the guy would surely stop the trolley being the only victim, people seem to find that course of action quite unacceptable. But when told that instead of pushing the guy, the person pulls a switch that opens a hole in the footbridge under him, the moral acceptability rises. Quite peculiar result, but there is an immediate possible explanation for some of the variability between the three scenarios. It is in fact quite clear that it is highly unrealistic that a person, no matter how heavy or how many bricks they have in their backpack, could actually stop a runaway trolley by being pushed in front of it. So one could appeal to the unconscious realism hypothesis to deduce that our moral intuitions, when evaluating the scenarios, are unconsciously taking into account a realistic representation of them. Recall that the unconscious realism hypothesis can be tested for and has evidence supporting it. But in this video we argue that to explain the difference between the three scenarios, we don't even need to take the unconscious realism route. Indeed, we claim that our eudaimonic calculus will give us a clear picture of the difference. Let's first apply our eudaimonic calculus in the standard trolley problem case. We quickly see that, as described, the situation is not as simple as choosing three lives instead of one. Indeed, for the purposes of the eudaimonic calculus, there are two relevant societal rules, the duty to rescue rule and manslaughter or murder. The duty to rescue rule is a rule that is present in most first world countries and may be stated as so. A citizen is required to provide help to anyone in imminent danger from accidental or exceptional circumstances as long as providing help would not present very significant risks, costs or burdens to them. Although this law is not codified ubiquitously across all nations, it is still often an unwritten primordial societal norm that sometimes can be even observed in the animal kingdom. The trolley problem appears to qualify for its use, so if one does not pull the lever, he will probably be eroding this rule, adding a negative utility component to the calculations. On the other hand, by pulling the lever, one could be accused of manslaughter or murder, since he is causing the death of a single person on the side tracks. Although, in a real case scenario, it would be highly improbable one would get punished for such an act, or that the act would be perceived as a murder. Indeed, in some places we also have good Samaritan laws that offer legal protection to people who give reasonable assistance to those who are in peril. The protection is intended to reduce bystanders' hesitations to assist, for fear of being sued or prosecuted for unintentional injury or wrongful death. So, taking the dilemma as described, it is implicitly set in a real-world setting, where many moral considerations factor into the choice of pulling the lever. Thus, the utilitarian calculus is a bit more complex than just choosing to kill one person instead of three, but it does seem to align with our intuitions. Now let's look at the switch case. If one decides to pull the switch and sacrifice a person to save three, and like the standard trolley problem case, we intuitively recognize that he would quite likely be held liable for murder. Indeed, when being asked the dilemma, there is no mention of what other members of society know. In particular, they don't know that if one pulls the switch, he has a 100% chance of stopping the trolley. There is also no mention that if one pulls the switch, nobody would know what transpired. So the act of using a person to stop the trolley will hardly be perceived as a good Samaritan act by other people. Thus, in the eudaimonic calculus, we would have to subtract the utility lost by eroding the rule to not murder, a very important societal rule. So the unrealistic probability of stopping the trolley is included indirectly in our moral intuitions by how other people will perceive the act and how it will influence societal rules. A perfectly fine reasoning, given how the dilemma is posed. Aside from the rationale just provided, there is also another reason why pulling the switch would likely get one charged with murder. And that is that by pulling the switch, one is causing harm as a means to a good deed rather than causing harm as a side effect to a good deed, as was the case in the standard trolley problem. This distinction is spelled out by the doctrine of double effect, that is a moral principle according to which there is a difference in causing harm as a means to an end, rather than as an unintended consequence of one's actions. Since it's not simple to describe when causing harm is meant as a means to an end, or when it is a side effect, 
We will consider the doctrine of double effect as a way of perceiving things that we share thanks to a common cognitive architecture, rather than enlarging our framework by including the principle as a part of a moral theory. Probably, the reason we utilize the doctrine of double effect when making moral considerations is that we use it as a way to gauge the intentions or character of an individual. People who are inclined to think about achieving some good result in the future through some immediate bad action may represent a danger for society. So we regulate to prevent these inclinations through the doctrine of double effect. But this is speculation on our part. In any case, we base some of our societal pressures and laws around the doctrine of double effect. For example, we allow doctors to remove the uterus or fallopian tubes of a pregnant woman, knowing the procedure will cause the death of the embryo or fetus in cases in which the woman, without the intervention, would die. In these cases, the intended effect is to save the woman's life, not to terminate the pregnancy. The termination of the pregnancy can be viewed as a side effect of the action of removing the uterus. Another example. To kill a person whom you know to be plotting to kill you, would be impermissible under the doctrine of double effect, because it would be a case of intentional killing. However, to strike in self-defense against an aggressor is instead permissible, even if one foresees that the blow by which one defends oneself will be fatal, since it would be a side effect of defending oneself. Even the societal rule that we often used in the eudaimonic calculus of the organ transplant example, the rule of not harming a patient to save others, can be viewed as a product of the doctrine of double effect. Since the patient from which the doctor would take the organs would be used as a means to achieve a good result, not the side effect. In addition, through the doctrine of double effect, we also have an explanation for why we don't perceive pulling the lever in the standard trolley problem case as breaking the societal rule of not murdering. Since the death of a person on the sidetrack is perceived as a side effect of a good intentioned action. Anyway, enough with the doctrine of double effect. Thanks to these two reasons just given, it should be quite clear by now that the eudaimonic calculus in the switch case is different from the one in the standard trolley problem, since in the switch case one would be eroding the rule to not murder, one of the first established societal rules and one of great importance, while pulling the lever in the standard case would hardly be perceived as an act of murder. Thus, we remain with the last case, that of pushing a person from the footbridge to stop the trolley. Of course, all of the reasonings made for the switch case apply to this one too, but why do our moral intuitions generally perceive it differently? Well, the difference is that there is an additional societal pressure that is being broken by pushing a person on the tracks, and that is the rule of not using personal force against innocent people. Clearly, the use of personal force against innocents is frowned upon in society. So in addition to the erosion of a rule to not murder, there is also an erosion component for breaking the do not use personal force rule. Or one could see it as an aggravating factor. Indeed, Greeny's research finds that we are more likely to disapprove of harmful actions that involve the application of personal force. With this, the eudaimonic calculus in the three cases is quite clear, and now nicely matches most people's moral intuitions. So there you have it, our simple eudaimonic calculus aligns with empirical evidence. And for these cases we didn't need to appeal to unconscious realism.